So this was a little toy that came in um, Kellogg's Corn Flakes. And you pack that with baking soda, and the little guy whizzes around the bathtub and sinks and then comes back up. This was probably Richard's in the 50s, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. Anyway, found Diver Mike on the beach. I'm Judith Selby Lang. And I'm Richard Lang. And together, uh, Judith and I are the collectors of tons of plastic from Kehoe Beach in the Point Reyes National Seashore, and we make art out of it. We really like to say that this is a love story. From our first date at Kehoe Beach, a whole life has unfolded. We decided that we were going to go to the beach and go as often as we could and see what we could collect in one year. We started specializing in one item, which was um, uh, juice lid caps, because they're colorful and they're ubiquitous. And we thought, well, let's make a trophy of our days at the beach, so we made a trophy fish. In that one year, we collected at least, least two tons, 4,000 pounds of plastic. And right around that time, the information about the North Pacific Gyre started coming through. It's an area that some describe as the size of Texas, some say twice the size of Brazil. The ocean currents conspire to create a giant swirl, and the plastic is collected there. It doesn't disintegrate. It degrades from the sun, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So what the gyre really is is a giant soup of these little plastic particles. Are we cleaning the beach? There's no way that we could clean the beach. As Judah says, we're not cleaning the beach, we're curating the beach. Um, we're picking up the things that we really like. We'll go sort of with a shopping list. So we may say, oh, we need some more disposable lighters, or we need a new swath of red or green. This is really fun. Um, <laughs> and, and people that go with us you know, think we're a little nuts, and then they get into it. really limited ourselves to this one little kilometer of beach because like a holographic pinpoint we want to talk about this one little place as the, the place that stands as a marker for the whole planet. In about two hours we can collect m probably more than we can carry back, usually 70, 75 pounds. This green thing is an agricultural pull tie for trellising up grapes. That's a balloon, we call them a balloon nib. It's the reinforced very top part of a balloon. So, some real treasures here. I'm very happy. <laughs> and look at how beautifully color coordinated they are. We could lose the yellow once you grab the yellow. Everything else here, look at there. Is that a great, great palette of things? I like the yellow. Okay. You like the yellow? It's a yeah. little Little, uh, <laughs> a little, you have a little, have a little contrast. contrast there. Oh, yeah. We bring it back, we wash it, and then begin a sorting process. And that is, to me, that's one of the great pleasures. Exercises in pattern recognition. I mean, these are some of the categories, these hat bands. Uh, bubble blowers. We find lots of AstroTurf. This is an oil truck. Perfect. perfect. <laughs> yeah. We got a book out of the library on plastic from the 40s and 50s when plastic really began its heyday. And there is a picture of this little plastic truck um, in perfect pristine condition and it was last made in 1949. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy that the styles have changed. I don't know too many people who use these anymore, but they're still washing up. It's just pure fun to find a lighter that's come all the way from Korea. One of the things we started finding, um, uh, these little red things. We didn't know what they were at first, and then we found another one, another one, another one, and what the hell are these things? And my daughter said, well, dummy, they're, um, they're the little cheese spreaders for Kraft Handy Snacks. So we've been in a dialogue with Kraft Food about these things, because the idea is that plastic in itself is not evil. 
But there is an evil, and the evil is single-use plastic. You know, to scrape up your cheese, put it on your little cracker, and then toss it away. I mean, it's just a ridiculous use of material. So we're working on a piece that's going to be uh, beginning in November at the SF MoMA, San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. It's very difficult for people to visualize the problem with plastic pollution. One statistic says that there's 46,000 pieces of visible plastic in every square mile in every ocean on the planet. That's an inconceivable number, so we've decided to count out what is in 10 square city blocks. So we're going to present 4,600 pieces of plastic suspended as if they were suspended within the ocean. We found the chair first, the whole green chair, but it was missing a leg, and then about a week later we found a leg. Different from a different, different chair. Different chair, but we put it together. Everything you need comes from the beach. Right just, there. Right there. People that make things really let the material speak. And this plastic has really spoken to us in this way where uh, the prints have become a, a kind of prime focus. We're inspired by um, Kandinsky and Clay and Matisse. This plastic seems to lend itself to these kind of, um, of artworks. A little bit formal, very abstract, um, um, and uh, it's a beautiful form to work with. We have a 128 megapixel camera, and it just captures the amazing details and textures of this stuff. People comment, oh, your work is so beautiful. And why not? Why wouldn't we want to make something incredibly beautiful and enticing? The opposite of beauty really is not ugly. The opposite of beauty is indifference. And we're trying not to be indifferent about this and about the world.